Hey, and welcome to the latest Redmond Reviews. I'm Chris Garlock, a managing editor of the American Go e-journal, joined once again, as always, by the Michael Redmond, our top nine don professional who's been doing these great uh, commentaries on the AlphaGo AlphaGo series. Michael, how you doing? Hi. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that uh, you've been, we've had a little bit of a break. This is our, our right. next, uh, our next leg in our, our series, and I think mm -hmm. uh, you're kind of uh, raring, to, raring to go. You've been looking over these games and and uh, you know doing these uh, very. I have to say, the SGF files are just uh, uh, full of lots and lots of variation. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we release this video, we of course will release the SGF file, so folks should follow along because um, I don't know. Michael may go into all the variations; he may not. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll just have to buckle in and and, and see where yeah, this yeah. goes. So yeah. uh, this is game six. Why don't you tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about the game? Well, it starts with um, on the left side of the board. There's something that Alpha Go does with black um, on the white side of the board, which is a bit unusual. And so it starts with a, something that we're going to be seeing again. In AlphaGo self-played games, um, which is going to look a bit weird, but it's it's you'll get used to it, I suppose. And <laughs> <laughs> and then there's just a lot of fighting. There's there's this dead group in the corner that stays that way for a long time, and so there's a lot of uh, you might say a lot of. Uh, Interesting stuff. Yeah, you, you, you sound. I get to call you Doctor Redmond. You're sounding like this is going to hurt just a. It's going to be a little. It's going to be a little pinch here. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. but it'll it'll be all right in the end. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. All yeah. right, let's take a look at it. Yeah. Okay, so we start with uh, the first four moves or ordinary as always, and then Black plays the high kahari, um, and this is an opening that happens again and again. Um, and actually, it's the same as one of the video, um, when I'm calling the video games, there's these five games that uh, DeepMind gave to Weichi TV, which is, um, it's a company that does uh, uh, videos for internet. So they're sort of YouTube type videos. And actually, I think now they're, those videos are on YouTube. Mm. Um, and finally was, um, with uh, Chinese com two commentators from China, two professional Chinese commentators, and they were going through the games. And so they had five extra games. That's why I'm saying that it's actually 55 self-played games instead of 50, because right. um, this internet TV channel um, had five games that were commentated by Chinese players. So that, that's all in Chinese language, so it's hard to understand for English speakers. Um, but finally was giving them some information from the networks. So he was giving a lot of uh, special information out. And this is one of the things that he was talking about. And I was really excited by this, um, some of these variations, because they uh, reminded me of stuff that Go Sagan said sometimes. And also in this variation, um, it sort of um, points to a problem I'm having with the fact that no one gets access to the, no one has direct access to the, uh, the network. So this is a position where uh, the Chinese commentator says, what happens if Black plays the Taisha? Okay. And uh, Fang Huyi had not pulled that data, so he didn't know. Hmm. Um, but he was pretty sure that AlphaGo would not, um, would probably play a fighting variation like the attachment on the fourth hmm. line. But, um, he just hadn't studied that. He didn't hadn't had an interest in that variation, and this is something that with um, similar variations happen in professional games, and it's something that has happened to me in one of my games, and so I had a personal interest, and so I was sort of disappointed that from he hadn't had the interest to play that to to find out what the pro, the policy network said about that. When you were in um, China, did you talk to them about uh, you know whether they would release the uh, the data, give more access? I mean, well, when they're in the middle of an event, the deep mind people will just say that they haven't they they're, they're going to wait until the event is over, and they haven't decided that yet. And um, and I don't think they they still haven't decided. Um, we'll have to wait until they make their uh, their next uh, emergence. <laughs> yeah. And so, so this is the variation that Fang Hui was showing, and this is how AlphaGo, the Karche version of AlphaGo, thinks the game will progress. And then, of course, the 3-3 invasion, um, which is sort of trademark of AlphaGo. Mm -hmm. 
And I think the idea here is that the cut in the upper left that White played is a really big move. And so first of all, AlphaGo doesn't like to allow White to play that cut. And so once White has played that cut, um, I think the assumption is that White is feeling good about the game. And Black's territory on the left side is not com complete, like there's a potential for White to invade. And so it's very rare for you to see Black play that Kakari at A. And so almost always, like there's maybe one game in all 55 where Black did not immediately connect here. Mm. And, and this Joseki is happening a, a lot. So, so it's a very rare occurrence that Black does not play this extension, this connection. And you might remember that um, against Lisa at all, AlphaGo is playing a hanging connection with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't do that anymore. It plays a solid connection. And Fun Hui had a really neat answer to, to, to that question. Why does it play the solid connection now? Uh, because when White plays away, AlphaGo is going to play this double Hane here, which is a very strong attack against White's corner. And when White uh, plays out like this, Black plays the nice move. And we can see that Black's solid connection on the left is enabling Black to surround White with this move. And so something like this is going to happen. And um, so this is what AlphaGo's policy network said that was going to do in the case that White plays away. And I was really fascinated because this is exactly the same sequence as Gosegen once showed me. And so they have the same idea, and there's no way that AlphaGo could have seen what uh, Gosegen was saying because it's a pretty rare occurrence in professional games. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And so they independently came up with the same variation. Um, and AlphaGo is so strong now, I would, I would put it that um, it's a sign that it shows how great Gosegen was, maybe. Um, oh, because yeah, I'm absolutely. already convinced about AlphaGo. Um, but Go Sagan was saying a lot of things that were very hard for some of us to understand, and they were hard for us to make use of in our actual games. And then with AlphaGo here, sometimes um, showing um, variations that are pretty much the same, um, it sort of uh, brings back to me the idea that Go Sagan was a great player, and we, we have to take another look at some of the moves that Go Sagan was suggesting because mm -hmm. a lot of Go Sagan's moves were really hard for us to, to imitate. Um, and so it's um, bringing back memories of Go Sagan. And I don't want to go too far down this because uh, we've got the whole game to go to, but I mean, you know, along those lines, I mean, is that is that more of a of a, just a, a higher level feel for the game to be able to, to you know, for people like Go Sagan to, to do that, to have well, that Well, Go Sagan was very flexible in that he, he, he didn't really, um, his game was very fluid. Ah. So there, there wasn't, um, to put it in a different way, he wasn't so obsessed with being consistent as right. most strong players are. Right. Uh, because being consistent is usually a good thing. So strong players are very biased towards um, making the best of previously played moves, but um, Gosegen was a bit more fluid than that. He, he, um, and his games changed a lot in midstream. And there's something very beautiful about that. And when Gosegen was doing it, it was working. And it's something that it's very difficult to make that work. Right. So that, and so there's that a similarity would, there. And I think that would be very uncomfortable for most pros because it's not necessarily reproducible and it's not going to be comfortable. And it's going to differ with just one of these stones on the board. There's these stones that seem to be so far away. Uh, Go Sagan's take on the position would change if any of these stones were just one line away. Mm -hmm. Like if one of those star points was on a 3-4 point, it would be a different game and the moves would be different. Um, and so it's, um, and that's true of most professionals too, but it was true to a greater extent with mm -hmm. Go Sagan. Um, and so it's very difficult when we had a similar board position, it would be very difficult to try to use these Gosegen moves because the meaning would be changing very subtly um, with with very slight differences in the board position. And so, yeah, uh, this again is a position where uh, AlphaGo never plays this Joseki. And um, this is game number six. Mm -hmm. And so um, some people might remember from game number five that AlphaGo didn't play this Joseki move in a nope. position where you might expect it. And almost never, like, I, I think, again, we might find a game or so in the 55 games. I forget my count, but maybe it was just one game. 
where AlphaGo played the Joseki move here. Um, usually, black plays away. And um, this is a, a Kakari against a Cornerstone, so it's a really big move. So a human player might play here too. Um, but it still is an example of how AlphaGo doesn't play the extension that is Joseki. And most players would want to pincer here. Um, but again, when white does that, uh, we all know that AlphaGo really likes this Joseki for black. And so I think AlphaGo is thinking that when black presses at the mark point, uh, this is going to be good for black. Mm. And so this is a variation that could happen in a human game. But apparently uh, AlphaGo is saying that this is good for black. It's a, big, yeah. fr it's a big framework. I mean, that white it's stone looks framework. kind of isolated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, my honest answer to that is I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I, I'm willing to say that, well, at least this is what AlphaGo feels is good for black. Um, so I'm willing to try it in my games. This is It looks normal enough for me to try it in my games. Mm -hmm. and, and then again, this is also um, an AlphaGo move that will be happening over and again. It's going to happen in a number of games, at least two, two. I think there were at least two games or three games maybe in which this position came up and AlphaGo played there. Um, but a human player would want to play. That seems like, like has a better balance, right? Yeah, this has a better balance for the time being. Um, but if we play this, uh, let's just play this variation. Um, I'm and then black plays this jump in the center. And I remember that this. I think maybe you remember that this is a move that AlphaGo really likes. It really um, likes. And it, yeah. when AlphaGo develops into the center here. Now that black stone on the left side is not perfectly positioned because there's this invasion that black has to worry about. Yes. So if we assume this kind of variation, then maybe it's better for black to have that stone here when that's going to happen. And so this move is um, inviting white to invade the left side. Um, it, it's making a move. Um, why don't we mark a point? Uh, it's making a move in this area much bigger if black gets to play here next. Sure. And so it's heating up the left side, you might say. <laughs> and so white invades. And yeah, so a human player wouldn't want to inv want, want white to invade here. White, white black would be a bit worried about that. Uh, but AlphaGo is welcoming it. And white jump, black jumps out, and white jumps out. So these two moves are normal. Um, and now with black, I would want to continue to attack white on the left side. Like if black uh, jumps here, um, Something like this would happen. And black has a reasonably <laughs> strong group on Sorry. in the upper left. Yeah, black has a reasonably strong group in the upper left. And white is sort of isolated in the center. So later later in the game, black can play a, a capping move maybe at the Tengen point from the center and uh, start to attack white on the left. So this is um, what seems to be a consistent way for black to play from the human viewpoint. And this is where human viewpoint differs from AlphaGo because AlphaGo is playing this move. Now, this is a really big opening point. If we're looking at the side moves on the side, this is a huge move because it's sort of hitting a weak point in white shape in the lower uh, in the lower left corner, and it's a big point um, when you're looking at the lower side. So it's a it's a big opening point. It's just that I would prefer to continue the fight in this position. I would continue to, to want to attack white in the center. So it seems a bit unnatural to me for black to be playing this move. It doesn't seem, this, more, it doesn't seem more balanced in terms of sort of... It's a very well-balanced move. It's, it's a, it's a, um, it's an AlphaGo type move in that mm. it is, is well-balanced with the whole board position and it's not biased to one local area. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a position where my feeling would be that the, the fight on the left is really more important. Ur more urgent. And I, yeah, and I want to, and as long as black can win this fight on the left side of the board, then the rest of the board is going to work out, work, work itself out for black. I so see. that would be my feeling. But AlphaGo is playing a more, and so it is a, it's, a, it's a very AlphaGo type move. It's an AlphaGo move that is balancing the whole board position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And white, uh, closes black in. This is what I didn't want to happen from black's viewpoint. Sure. Um, but AlphaGo doesn't worry about that black group. That, the black group <laughs> apparently is okay. And this move is really surprising. Like, um, what is black doing on the outside here? 
Um, it's also very typical of AlphaGo that AlphaGo, um, instead of playing some move to try to live in the on the left side, Black Black has a number of ways to live on the left side. Um, but Black, as AlphaGo, as Black is trying to play some extra forcing moves from the outside first. Like if White plays here, White's going to be okay. Um, this is a move that secures White connection. Uh, but Black will then um, just play these forcing moves from the outside and then finally live on the side with something like this. So this is um, this is sort of, you could call it AlphaGo's default plan with Black. Black is trying to play these forcing moves with the plan A to get something extra towards the center and the and the left lower side, the right side maybe. Mm -hmm. And then finally Black will live in the corner. So that Black's trying to do things in this order. Um, if white attacks from the corner, this is going to be, actually it turns out this is going to be bad for white because um, this attachment here works with that stone in the center very well. Black can cut white off here. And now at this point, uh, cutting in the center and capturing that cutting white stone is going to be me. So if white saved that stone, um, this kind of thing might happen. But that white group on the left side is in trouble. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, yeah. So this is bad for white. <coughs> so to go back to the game, so both of these moves are not really satisfying for white. Like um, playing here is dangerous because white can be cut off in the center. And playing here is a bit too submissive. So white jumps in here. This is a nice move. And so white is attacking from the side and sort of force soling uh, the cut that we were seeing in, in this variation. It's force soling black from cutting mm. in the center mm. like this, uh, making the side position more, more urgent. And um, just, this fight is going to turn good for white. So black is dodging around a little bit. Black jumps here, mm -hmm. uh, threatening white on the left side. White answers on the left side. Then black dodges out here. And black is still trying to get some forcing moves from the to, from the right before black tries to live in the corner. Like if white plays here, um, now white now black's going to try to live in the corner. Black can still play this kind of tesuji and make a living shape. Like this is one thing that could happen. White's going to get some territory on the left side. But black does still have that attachment at the mark point and can later, um, in later stages of the game, can reduce white's territory a little bit. It's not such an attractive territory for white, even though there's a few black stones in there. So this is black's plan here. And so what white does is white plays this move. This is a nice thick move. Um, and black uh, goes into the corner. Um, and let's just do the main variation here. Um, I, I made some variations for when white tries to kill black. This move is a bit of an overplay, so let's just show the actual game. Black lives in the corner, and white connects here. This is a very solid move. Uh, white has a very nice thick position. Of course, black has accomplished the um, object of uh, forcing from the right before trying to live in the corner. But actually, this black group is not alive yet. Just, yeah, right. It needs one it's more not move, a right? Yeah. It needs one more move, but Black's not going to do that. Um, <laughs> course, when White plays not. here... <laughs> if you're playing five moves there. Yeah. Uh, if White plays here locally, it's, it's a well-known Smeagol problem, a life and death problem, which is going to turn into a co. And there was a moment where I thought, maybe Black has a way of getting away without a co. And I made a lot of variations for that, or a long variation maybe, this way. And this variation is not really working. So it's going to be this. It's going to be this co here. Um, my verdict is this. This co is going to happen. It's pretty big, um, but maybe the opening points are still bigger. So mm. this is a point where Black chose not to put the stone in to save that group. And the variation I went into is what happens if Black tries to connect on the second line. So this was a lot of fun. It turns out White can probably kill this group um, because White can. Um, cut black off this way and white connects on the second line. Uh, this kind of stuff happens, so white has a really painful shape there and black has a lot of extra liberties, but black cannot really finish white off in the center because white, white has a living shape on the lower side and black can't... Um, and so this this was exciting, but it... You had fun with this, didn't you? I had a lot of fun with this, um, um, but I wasn't... Um, I, I wasn't able to find a way to capture this group in the center. So this would end up as a, 
uh, crass for black. It wouldn't work. Right. Um, so I gave up on that variation. Um, and uh, going back to the game, I'm just going to say that this is going to be this is going to be the co, okay. this co here, and maybe it's not big enough at this point. And so, so even when white pushes here, that's going to change the variation I was showing you just now. But black's mm -hmm. not going to bother with that. Black's just going to play the co in the lower left corner, and black plays away. And at this point of the game, this is a bigger point. But um, the interesting thing is that both players left this lower left corner sort of to the end game. They didn't, they didn't bother with it to the end of the game. And um, I think that's taking, leaving it alone to an extreme that is further than I would go. I like, like there's a point in the game where this is getting to be pretty big. How many points is it? Well, I think the um, entire, um, it takes a number of moves. Like it takes one move for black to live and it's gonna take white, white has to win the code. So it's, um, white will be playing two moves to kill it. So it's a number of moves that um, the player has to play. And the entire um, difference in territory is something like 30 points. Okay, that's what I was counting as 30 points. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 that's a chunk of points. It's a chunk of points, but um, if you're playing a lot of moves to get it, maybe it's, um, so, uh, when you count yeah. pose, it's a bit tricky because you're talking something some people call absolute value of a move. Right. Right. And, and usually people talk in a way that is not absolute value, but the difference in, in size. And so it, it's about the same size as a 20-point move elsewhere okay. on the board, is what we'll, we would usually call it. We'll just accept that. Each move is worth about 20 points. And this big opening points would usually be called something like a 30-point move. So sure. it, it's still bigger than the lower left corner, but there's points in the games where I sort of, I, I wish that uh, Alpha <laughs> had gone back to the lower left corner, but... Um, it's hard to call it sometimes. So still, th this move looks bigger to me than the lower left corner. So I agree with white at this point. Okay. And so with this move, black is um, refusing to allow white into the corner. If white plays on the side, black's going to expand the lower side. So this is going to be an efficient mo moyo that black has here. And if this lower side turns into territory, it's going to be very good for black. It's not territory yet, but it's getting there. It's looking, it's looking like a lot of black stones. It's a lot of. It's going to be a, a, a very good fight for black when white tries to jump in for it. So um, I, I sort of agree with this move too. It's a good <laughs> yeah. time for white to jump in. And there's also the fact that we're going to see it happening. Um, there's a remote possibility for white to attack black on the lower side. And so black has to ha keep that in mind while attacking uh, white on the lower side. White, mm -hmm. Black has to remember to keep the the lower side black group strong, just because white does have all this thickness on the left side of the board. Um, black has to make sure that this lower side group has a living shape as black tries to split white and uh, attack white. So at this point, white is proposing to give up the one stone in the lower right and develop maybe on the on the right side towards the upper, upper right corner. And black with this move is saying black is not gonna allow that. Black is trying to attack very strongly. So throughout this fight here that is starting, Black is cutting White into two pieces. And White is going to try to build territory on the right side because there's so much room on the right side. And the lower side White group is not going to make any territory, but White's going to try to escape with it. So White's going to try to play uh, light sabaki, you might say, um, mm -hmm. in the using the Japanese word. White's trying to just trying to escape with his life on the lower side. But white would like to be able to make some territory as white deals with the right side group. So there's a difference in the way white's going to handle these two groups as black cuts them off. And this is a strong counterattack. Like if black plays here, um, white will cut. And uh, this will reduce black's shape. Now, there's two ways black can play here. Black can play here, uh, in which case uh, white's going to get a very nice territory on the right side. So this is according to plan for white. And white's just going to dodge around in the center of the board. And it's going to be difficult for white to kill that. Uh, it's going to be difficult for black right. to yeah. kill that white group. So maybe black jumps here, but this is going to allow white to get a squeeze here. And yeah, I'm not sure about that Atari, but this is the simple variation where mm -hmm. white is getting some territory on the right side. And we can see that white standard group is going to escape too. Mm-hmm. That's another variation where I played around with, but this is the simple version of it. Um, 
And so that's white's plan, if black plays here. And black comes up with this move. And this Ooh, is a, nice, a really fancy move. That's a fancy move. So the idea behind this move is that this is the way black wants to cut white. And black finishes with this move, which is taking away white's eye space on the right side. And although black's moves, that black stones in the center are sort of um, white can play on Atari from any direction. Yeah. It's a um, but white doesn't. Let's let's just put add some moves to this. Like if white continues like this, uh, then this stone, these stones on the lower side are in serious trouble. Right. Now. Right. Right. So that's the idea behind. It. Um, however, white plays at this point. White's not going to be able to capture the key cutting stone. That is amazing. It, lo it looks, like, it looks like Swiss trouble. cheese on the top there, but it's actually yeah. got a lot of resilience. Yeah, there's that one stone there. I'll, I'll mark the one stone that Black cannot sacrifice. This one stone is the stone that Black is not going right. to give up. Right. And so it, it, it looks like it's a dangerous fight for White. So White didn't do that immediately, but eventually White has to play here. So White starts with this move, which induces Black to play the wedge. This Black really wants to play the wedge, um, just the shape move, um, because allowing White to, let's just put another, I'm getting carried away here, I'm adding version. <laughs> uh, allowing White to play this shape would be bad for Black. It would, sure. it would be, White would be putting a lot of um, pressure on Black's lower side crew. And as I was saying before, the left side is a very thick shape for White. Mm -hmm. And so Black doesn't want this lower side group to get counterattacked. So black plays the wedge here. So what's instead of playing here immediately and getting cut off like this, white is starting with this side, getting something extra on the lower side with this exchange, and in a natural um, sequence, white is playing this point. So mm -hmm. it's it's very well done by by white. And again, uh, allowing black to cut here is still is still looking troublesome for white. It would be the same variation um, in which uh, white is looking a bit cramped on the lower side. White isn't even connected to that knight with that knight's move. It's not really a good connection. So this is sort of worrying for white. And white doesn't. White avoids the confrontation here. White um, starts by trying to make eyes on the lower side with this move. And again, we can see that this is sort of putting pressure on black on the left side. So black has to worry about this lower side group because black doesn't want to get pushed against that white wall on the left. So black plays here to make a living shape. And now white runs away. And because of that exchange, these last four moves, starting with this move, white has some extra eye space on the lower side. Mm. And so just barely white is going, going to be alive. So black plays the peep, and now white dodges away. This is where it gets a bit exciting, because uh, you might expect black to want to cut here. Um, Would you not? I was, trying, yeah. I, was, I was trying to read that out. It looks pretty good. And it's, yeah, it looks pretty good locally. It's the strongest local move. White will um, jump in, move into the corner. Um, Black will probably play this Tetsuji to capture the four stones. Mm -hmm. And white, this will um, make a trade with the corner, white taking the corner. Um, Black is taking the outside. Uh, but black hasn't really wow. fully captured those four stones on the outside. Black has captured the four stones on the side, mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. corner territory is pretty big too. That's an eight, almost mm -hmm. an eight-point territory for white. So that's a pretty big territory. And so this is about even, maybe. Um, and because white got Sente to play that Kahari in the upper right, maybe it's um, okay for white. So this is this is what I think Alpha Go was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like a reasonable variation. I'd be interested to see the value network score mm -hmm. for this. Um, it's probably pretty even. Not what happened, though. Not what happened. Black um, is continues to try to attack the entire white group. So this is according to Black's original plan, you might say. And Black takes away White's eyes. So now, mm. um, now White has to move out into the center. And this is a nice little test issue. This is um, this is why I say that in the middle game. There's a lot of uh, what AlphaGo is doing that we can um, learn from because this is a move that a pro would play also, but it's a good example of Tesuji. And there's this thing about AlphaGo, it has a very strong bias for, for good shapes. Mm -hmm. And I think that has to do with the value net because I think shape is one of the values that the value net uh, uses to judge the um, validity of a move. It's one mm. of, um, not only does it, um, 
she has, I suppose it counts territory and stuff like that too, but I think the shape of the stones is important too. And so AlphaGo has very good shape. It's, it has good suji. Um, and it, it usually plays the tesuji move um, when it has a choice. And so actually the mistakes that I think I'm sometimes finding are moves that are vulgar <laughs> and just <laughs> happen to be good in that particular position. Uh -huh. And it, it often ignores that possibility. It just it probably doesn't even show up in the po uh, in the policy network. Huh. Um, it's just okay. a move that is automatically rejected, the bad shape move. Yeah, just, yeah, because it can't if it's vulgar, it's not going to be good sushi. And it, it's just not one of the uh, possible moves that are suggested, maybe. Right. Or it's very low on the list, I would suppose. Right. Um, right. I don't really know that because I'm not seeing the policy network, but I, I that's what I the feeling I get. And so because AlphaGo has a tendency to play good shape moves or good tesuji moves. Um, it becomes very good um, examples for amateur players and professional players right. to, to, to play the right moves because um, they these good tesuji moves, good shape moves, um, have a very high percentage of being the right move. And the reason for that is because um, if white plays this move first, then of course black is going to find a different way to answer this. Like maybe black's going to play this way, and when white connects here, uh, that empty triangle shape there is really bad for white. Mm. So white plays it um, before playing this move. White plays here first. Now if black uh, plays something like this, white's going to have a different way of moving out in the center. Maybe like something like this. So white's going to have much better shape in the center. And so that's the meaning of white playing this attachment first and black pushes through and then white pushes through. So this is a good, an example of a good order of moves. Mm. And, and so white gets to play uh, this forcing move. Um, when white cuts here, white's actually threatening to cut again on the third line. So if black plays in the center, uh, white can capture the one stone. Obviously, um, it's important that white has an eye there on the side, so almost a living shape. And also the fact that white has a cut in the mark point. So this is going to be bad for black. So it's correct for black to play this move on the side to save the one stone. And then um, white gets an extra forcing move in the center. And finally, white gets to play on the right side. So this whole fight here, uh, when I look at the result that I see, uh, there's no way that black can kill this white center group. It's, it's, um, it's safe enough. And part of the equation there is the fact that white has such a strong shape on the left um, there's, it's not uh, looking realistic for black to try to kill this lower side white group. And so the fact that white has played all these extra moves on the white, on the right side uh, in the meanwhile means that this whole fight here has been a successful, successful mm -hmm. white. And so at this point, I think that white has established a lead. Um, so black plays this, this is a big move. Um, and it looks almost like we're heading into an end game here. Mm -hmm. Like you, you would think that from this point onward, maybe the game is going to get a bit more simple, but it doesn't happen that way. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> so the three three point here is big, and still at this point of, of the game, even uh, although uh, the left lower left corner is not alive, and that's something that's sort of bothering me. Uh, the fact that it's a co means that it's um, although. If white can kill that group, it's going to be a difference of 30 points when compar compared to when black puts a stone in and lives. Right. Um, at this point, maybe the 3-3 three, three point is still a bit bigger. Um, and also there's that move on the upper side, uh, which is going to come up fairly soon. Black is attacking the center a little bit first. And this move here, this is also a huge move. So um, the moves played in this part of the game are still bigger maybe than the lower left corner. And white plays here. This is a nice thick move that settles white's problems in the center and gives white a nice thick shape. And also black protects. And this is also pretty necessary once white's center group is settled, black has to um, reinforce that connection in the upper left. And so everything is making sense for a while here. And at this point, I'm really expecting the game to simplify a bit. Uh, because the only real problem left is the lower left corner. That's a, a it's a, just a local code. It's, it should be um, relatively straightforward. 
Of course, knowing AlphaGo, it's not going to happen that way. Um, I'll wait back to that that white move. I was wondering how far white could go in there. Yeah, this is a position where it's really hard to read out the center variations. Uh -huh. And we can see that white is trying something with this peep here. Uh -huh. And uh, black's shape in the upper right is not very strong. And so there's a feeling that maybe white can get in this far. Okay. But um, I would be a bit worried <laughs> in an yeah. actual game, especially mm -hmm. if I was had a limited amount of time. Um, but it looks like it's... Um, it looks like white can jump in this far, and I think white has to to um, keep ahead of black in this game. So right. it's um, it may be a reasonable move. Okay. Um, black is adding to some Aji here. Um, these moves will maybe the meaning of these moves will become clearer later in the game because black's setting up this cut here, and there is some potential for black on the left side, um, but it's not important enough yet. So black moves back to the center. And this is a loose, uh, large nice move here. Um, so one wonders what happens if white attacks here. This is a weak point in black's connection. Uh, black will continue this way and um, save the upper side group with this jump. And then white uh, tries to capture the cutting stones. Beautiful. Uh, but uh, in this case, uh, black has good shape with the jump here. And black can save the stones. like. Um, if white uh, connects against this peep, black's going to get a, a bamboo jump. So this is right. relatively easy for black. Um, so actually, the game move, white starts with this pressing move. Huh. This is the pressing move that comes up later in this sure. variation. Sure. Uh, white played it at this at this point, and it wasn't so effective. But um, when white plays it first, the natural shape that comes to mind is for black to push here. After which white cuts here. So, so this is the correct order of moves. If black plays the same way, now that empty triangle that black has just played oh, is really bad. Yes, very nice. And black can still squeeze out of this, but white's getting a lot better shape in the center. And actually, now white has potential to attack black's three stones in the center. So uh, this is a success for white. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. This is the variation that white is sort of aiming at. So it's a big difference there, the order of moves. And now black, um, so black doesn't do that. Black backs up here and white gets to connect in the center. Um, and we have this kind of thing happening. Um, and there's something in the center here to do with this hane. Black would like to be able to play this hane to start attacking white in the center. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a problem involved with that because it changes the number of liberties black has in the lower side group. And so uh, when black continues playing in the center, white can squeeze here. Now, this is a point where black could sacrifice those four stones and live on the lower side, but, you know, that's not attractive. Mm -hmm. So if black connects here, though, then we see a complete collapse for black because this is a dead mm -hmm. group. Oh, God. And so that's an example of how um, playing this forcing move has a bad effect on black's group on the lower side when white fills the, the liberty here. Wow. And so that's why black's not doing that. And that means that white gets to connect up from this side. Mm -hmm. And now, now it's, um, everything is settled. White saved the center stones. And that's a nice connection. Also, black is, uh, has a very nice thick shape connected up to the upper side. Uh, but black doesn't have enough territory. White's winning by territory. Yeah, a little, a little so, short. Yeah, so at this point, I'm thinking the game is just about over. Um, but yeah, all the, all the fun starts now. Um, White answers here. Let's see, what did I do with this one? Uh, there's still the co here. It's a good point where white still wants to play the co. Um, there's a, actually the co, the, um, the co, yeah, I remember now. The status here of the co is a bit different now. Uh, because of those black stones that black played um, in this area on the left side, the, the shape has changed a little bit as the game progressed. And white cannot kill it now. Because when this happens, you can see that the black has uh, cut white off oh, and the white is right. So right, all of right, those right. moves that black was playing, like I, I might as well mark one of them um, in this shape. Uh, these stones here, like, uh, like this stone and this stone, they're coming into play here. These moves Very that nice. black played uh, as the game progressed. 
And so white uh, covers on the corner. This is, and black extends down. Black is sort of preparing to play something on the left side. Black is playing a, what is supposed to be a forcing move against the upper left corner. But white takes this huge point on the left side. This is a really big move. Um, and you can see that now the status of the lower left black group is going to be a co again. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, white can play here. Now this is going to be a co. Um, so this is not only huge in territory, it changes uh, what's going to happen in the lower left corner. So black plays here. Now this is a shape that happens a lot in this joseki that we started with in the upper left corner. It's a very normal shape. And any pro will tell you that there's a way for white to live without ko. Like it's very commonly known that white okay. can play here um, and allow black to connect up. And because black has to play another move to make a full connection, white can live on the upper side. So this is a kind of a standard sequence. And um, I played the best sequence for black. Um, however, black, uh, this, this kosumi is actually the best way for black to connect up on the first line. Um, but even if black plays that move with something like this, it's going to be the same story um, because this is going to be a forcing move and black has to back up once to save those stones on the side. So, so something like this is going to happen. Or black could play a cut here to save that with sente, but that would not accomplish anything because white's alive anyway. And so this is a position where white has mm -hmm. a very well-known way of living on, in the corner. Um, which any pro would probably automatically choose. And I don't know why AlphaGo didn't play that, because um, my judgment of this result here is that white's going to win the game. So why didn't AlphaGo play that? Um, I think white's going to win by a few points in this mm -hmm. situation. And so I, when white plays here, now this is going to be a co, and it's going to be a lot of trouble. <laughs> Yeah, to say the it's least. It's going to be really troublesome. And so this is a point where um, we're still at move number 126. And so there's uh, over 100 moves left in the game, well over 100 moves, something maybe more like 150 moves. It's not an end game where I can really um, give a correct sequence. I have no way of, um, it's, it's just too much open space for me to, uh, with confidence, tell you, give you a variation for the end game. Um, mm -hmm. So, and this is where I think that AlphaGo is maybe still making what I would call mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, but mistakes are, that are so hard for me to um, to, to 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 call. To, mm -hmm. Mistakes that are so hard for me to point out and and say that this move lost so many points. Um, so it's it's hard. It's, it's this is a move which I would call a mistake, but I will have trouble telling you how many points White lost in this fight. Um, so right. it could be a point where AlphaGo is tr uh, turning this uh, game into a half point difference. Uh, you, and there's no way I'm, yeah, there's no way I'm going to cast it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's right. just too complicated. Right. Yeah. Um, and so this is a call. Like, uh, at this point, it looks like white still has ways to kill this black group in the corner. But when white tries to do that, white's going to lose the semi. Like, there's this variation. Um, let's just do one variation. Yeah. There's this one where white can kill this corner group, but this is going to be a disaster. White's going to lose the semi. Or actually, it's going to be a co. But this co is really bad for white because black's getting all these forcing moves from outside. Mm. And white's going to have zero local co threats. And the actual game, it was the actual game was much better than this for White because White had a lot of local co threats, and that's what saved White's group. So having no co threats locally is really bad for White. So to go back to the actual game, White just uh, allows Black to get this straightforward co. And if this was happening in a, a, a professional, a human professional game, the player with White would be freaking out because this was a White territory. And it's turning into a co for White's life. So this is really bad uh, locally. Locally, it's a really it's, it's a a terrible disaster. Mistake. It's a disaster, it's a disaster. Right? And the saving thing for White is that White seems to have a number of local co threats that might be saving White. Um, but there's co threats all over the board. And um, it's already a position that's um, even just solving this one co is, is becoming very difficult to read out. Wow. 
so black plays the honey here. Um, yeah, so again, it's a point where this would be so frightening for me that I would not want to choose this sequence for white. And I actually think it is actually bad for white. Um, but in the actual game, AlphaGo did manage to settle it um, eventually in a peaceful trade. And so um, there's a question there. Well, remains. what's the question? I mean, isn't it, isn't it a fair assumption that it's read that out or you don't buy that? Um, well, there's some, some things that I'm worried about in this whole variation. Like there's some points where, uh, let's, let's take it piece by piece, but there's some points where there was different ways to play that would have changed the normal cultures and stuff like that. And White's taking a lot of collateral damage in this fight anyway. Um, and White will be taking collateral damage. Mm -hmm. so, so there's, um, so Black's going to end up gaining a lot. Um, to be precise, Black ends up gaining a lot on the left side. Mm -hmm. Um, and so in the end, it wasn't worth it for white anyway. Um, so, so I would go back to that variation, uh, where I showed you how a professional would normally just live. And that's going back to, uh, to this move. It's so simple and it, it does give white about five points of territory. So, um, I think this would be an easy win for white. So that's, that's my verdict here. Um, and, that, and I have this very... No, but it's fair. I mean, if that's your verdict, I have a lot of confidence in that. I mean, AlphaGo is usually very good at just sort of taking the win and not doing anything fancy. Mm -hmm. So why would it choose an incredibly complicated, you know, variation? Well, I guess I guess that's your question. That's my question. Um, uh, I have to admit that AlphaGo seems to be better at handling these complicated positions than. Um, these, it's very good at handling these, these positions that are already too complicated for most human players. Mm -hmm. um, and in the actual play, White did actually manage to live and capture that corner group by winning the co. Mm -hmm. And so to a certain extent, it worked. And, and White did win the game. Uh, White did win by half a point. <laughs> so, so maybe it was... So your your warning bells are going off. I can tell yeah, your 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 little yeah. spidey sense is tingling, right? Because it just makes you really suspicious. Because you 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 found a sequence where you think that white wins comfortably, and instead mm -hmm. white wins by half a point. So your spidey sense is saying, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but of course for AlphaGo, uh, those two results are equal. It doesn't um, it doesn't see any difference between a half point win and a five and a half point. They're both difference. wins, right? They're both wins. They're the same thing. Um, and so this is, uh, if we assume that the rest of the game was played correctly, then this was just another way for white to win. So it's interesting. We were talking, uh, in, in game five of, of, uh, the, uh, the end game being something for, for, you know, players to study. Uh, but it, it looks to in me In this game, like... definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do not do this at home. Do, do, do right. not try this at home. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a bad idea. <laughs> um, I think that this kind of allowing Black to get this co in this corner, the, the, the original move that Black played here um, is actually a, a fairly common occurrence. It's right. one of the key points in the corner, so a vital point. And so this is going to happen in if Black is a re reasonably strong player. It's going to happen a lot. And I would say that 90% um, of the time at least, this is going to be the correct answer. Especially, um, and I'm talking about a position where white is limited to just the corner territory like this. And that means that black is going to get a co when this happens. Mm -hmm. So avoiding the co is almost always going to be the correct move. Maybe I should, was conservative in saying 90%. Maybe it's something more like 95, 98% of the time. This is going to be the correct move. And this game, this move happened to work. Um, it's a good stake move. It would it would work better if White had more territory on the side, of course. But uh, in this case, it's really dangerous. And I, I just say it's a bad idea. <laughs> uh, in most cases, it's a bad idea. You spent a bunch of time in this game being uncomfortable. You didn't like that whole thing with the group on the left side, and now you've yeah. got this whole co thing. The three, you know, it's, it's this is not a comfortable game for you. Oh, it's yeah. It was really tough to figure out what's going on here. Um, yeah, and so th this this play um, is very different from the play in game number five, which was 
uh, an end game where people could learn learn from every move played. Whereas this is just very weird. It's, it's something that AlphaGo Alpha plays a lot of weird co-fights. Um, it just loves to play a co. And sometimes I think it plays a co when it doesn't need to. And I think this game might be an example of that. And so this cut here is a forcing move. It's threatening, if white finishes the co, it's threatening this side actually. So this is gonna be another semi on the left, on the right side, which is gonna be another co. So maybe white could have played Jeez. this. This this could have happened. This would just be another co. Um, but then of course, white wouldn't have any co-threats for this co. Black would still have some co-threats on the left side of the board. Um, the point is that in this co in the upper left corner, uh, white still has a lot of local co threats. So maybe white wanted to fight the co in the le upper left corner. Uh, white has co threats like this and still has some local co threats. And we can see something happening on the left side here as black starts to build here. Um, locally, this move is not working. Like white could play here, and this is the best local move. But if white plays this way, uh, we can continue the co a little bit. Um, something like this. Um, black has all these local co-threats here. Like this would be uh, a huge gain for black if black could get this move in and we would see that group on the white, on the left side, white has to save that group. The group on the lower side, white has to save that group. So white's sort of falling apart here. And in the meanwhile, black's uh, group in the corner has come to life. And so this would be bad. So white has to answer that. And this means that black gets a whole bunch of big co-threats on the left side. So this, um, we'll just go through my estimation of what might happen with this co. Is that white, eventually white's gonna run out of co-threats. You can see white got really desperate there and was playing some co-threats on the side, but eventually white runs out after this, uh, has no more local co-threats. So this is uh, a crash for white. Wow. So what happened here is when black, um, when black played that move, this co threat here, with this answer, white is taking a local loss already. Uh, instead of playing the strongest move here, white is playing here to take a local loss in order to win that co. So this is where white is taking a, losing a lot of points because white has to deal with that co in the upper left corner. So this is where um, the payoff is for black. Black is getting a lot out of that. So the code continues. And you can see that white still has some local code threats. And now at this point, if black continues to answer on the upper side, white's code threat is threatening to play at the mark point. So black has mm -hmm. to continue to play on the upper side if black wants to kill white, but black has run out of any valid code threats. So this is a good point for black to leave the code for the time being and play this move, which is huge. It's, I, was, I was just looking at that, I was like, that is, I was trying to calculate how big that is. It's, it's so... Mm -hmm. It's really big. And now white, sit, white goes after the corner again, and black just takes this. Now, strictly oh, speaking, man. This, it would have been better, strictly speaking, for black to take from this side, but that's a, it didn't have any effect on the, on the game uh, and the score on the game, so I, I just left that. Okay. And... Um, and now there's there's an extra value to this because now the lower left corner is alive. And so I put in a variation for that. White tries to kill the lower left corner and black can connect on the, lower, on the first line. Oh, isn't that So cute. there's an added value there. And so it's not just the 15 points that black got on the left side and the white territory on the left side that has disappeared, but also the fact that lower left corner group is not a co anymore. So we can see black is getting a lot of profit out of this call. And white plays once yeah. here. And yeah, they continue the call a little bit, but white has enough call there. So white finishes the call finally. Um, and so white's got a, a fairly sizable territory there in the upper right. So that's about 15 points. Mm -hmm. Upper left, I mean upper left. Um, upper left and yeah. so Compared to that, that that variation I was showing you where white uh, lives with five points, white's gained about 10 points there. So that's big. And white got that, uh, white got to play this move, this move here, I'm um, sorry. Let's see, where is that move? 
this move here was a big mm -hmm. move. Mm -hmm. So uh, white's gaining in, in those parts of the board. Meanwhile, black has um, got this huge gain on the left side of the board, which is so big that I think that in in the whole sequence, starting with this co in the upper left, um, black has gained um, quite a good amount. Uh, it, it was a large gain for black, a few points at least. And so now finally, we're back to a straightforward end game. Um, and now the game is actually gonna settle down a little bit. Um, this was an important move. If black plays this, this is the biggest move as far as points is concerned, but then white can push through and cut in the center. Like this would be bad for black. Uh, right, right. And black can't cover here because white would just cut. So that's not gonna work. And so that's why black plays this move um, and white captures the one stone. Um, I have a question. I still, um, it's still a lot of end game. So I didn't bother to try to solve this end game. Sure. And I wouldn't be very confident that even if I tried, um, we're still below 200 moves. Um, into the game and and probably close to 100 moves left to play. Wow! wow, uh, wow. So it's yeah. So it's it's a difficult end game still. Um, though maybe if I really made a great effort, maybe I could solve this end game. I think this is the biggest move here. And the actual game black played on the upper side, and white got the curl here, which was mm. a slightly a slight gain for white. And I think at this point the game is um, a win for white. There's no way black can win after this. So uh, that move there, black 195, uh, I do have the question of what might have happened. It would have been another close game. Mm -hmm. um, so this is maybe black's last potential winning move in the game. Because after this, I don't see any way that black can win. It's, and it's, so it's, these, I mean, I just noticed that all of these games are so close. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah that's what makes it very difficult. Um, and this move is nice. It, it um, completes the connection in the center by playing this forcing move. And then we we're just playing end game moves now. Yeah. So it's pretty straightforward for a while until Black decides it's going to lose anyway and starts to play strange moves like this. Uh, why is this a strange move? It's a strange move because now the lower left corner is a co again. I mean, like if black, white, well, now just looking at the lower left corner, if white plays here, it's going to be a co because black yeah, lost no, that connection. No, no, I get that. I'm just saying, why would it do that when it just has your your connection? Well, black's losing anyway. <laughs> um, so it doesn't care. And white's not going to bother with going after that black group. And so it's, it's a, quest, a point where AlphaGo as black and as white, have, have, they have both decided that uh, white's going to win this game. And um, there's no loss or gain of territory in that exchange in the lower left. And so white's just sort of ignoring it. Um, and yeah, so the game no, ends. I'm sorry, when you say there's no loss or gain of territory, I mean, if like this would be, oh, this is, I, I put a variation in at this point for what I, uh, with, with black not playing that ex exchange. Mm. And so this is what I think the correct end game would be. Ah, okay. And uh, so I, I have this sequence, which is a forcing sequence for black. And this is a big move. And then uh, the left, lower left is going to be like this. And then we just continue the end game. I, I think I might have put the whole end game in. No, I didn't just this far. Um, and I put in a comment, I think it was actually maybe more than a half point. It, it could have been uh, one and a fourth stones or something like that. I'd actually have to look at the SDF file to tell you exactly, but it was, this is going to be a win for white. Mm. I, my memory tells me, I think it was a one and a fourth stones. So mm -hmm. maybe a two and a half point difference. Um, and so, you know, I get the feeling that AlphaGo was sort of aggravated that it couldn't create a half point difference. <laughs> <laughs> I but question. when the, the losing side plays this kind of move, which is uh, has the potential to, to lose more by more, but it just doesn't cure because uh, Black is losing the game anyway. It's like it's like in humans play when when uh, somebody's looking for a place to resign, right? Yeah, you could say that. Mm.
Uh, mm. And so this is where the game ends. The AlphaGo left a, a lot of endgame moves. Um, but Black would continue by playing at A7. Black would be continuing, if Black wanted to continue the game, then this would be the biggest territorial move. Um, but maybe Black would be playing this one to, to live in the lower left corner. Mm -hmm. And um, in either case, Black would be losing by something like one and a fourth stumps. And so, you know, so why bother playing it out? Because it's just, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just leaving a little endgame problem for me to fill. So. <laughs> Hey, uh, before we wrap up, you had mentioned uh, that uh, you were starting to play not not exactly AlphaGo moves per se, but AlphaGo like moves. In, in yeah, well, there was games. yeah, there was this video that we did uh, for my game with Kobayashi Koichi, mm -hmm. in which I was saying I was having a lot of trouble playing those moves, um, and then in the game after that. Um, I, I'm still not playing the opening moves like those invasions into three three points, which come too early um, by conventional wisdom, at least. Um, so I'm not doing that yet, but I um, I am sort of picking up on the wild middle game that AlphaGo plays. So I was mm -hmm. playing a much more uh, a sharper middle game, you might say, a much more strongly fighting middle game mm -hmm. um, in uh, one of my games after that. And I, I, I felt that I saw some resemblance to AlphaGo, so I, I, maybe I'm picking up on that. And that's sure. the part of the game. That's part of AlphaGo's game that I think that I can learn a lot from. Because as I was saying, um, AlphaGo has great feeling for good shape and has a bias towards good shape in Tezuji moves, um, which is a good habit in general. Sure. Yeah, no, it really, it's, it's, you can see it when you, it's such an elegant moves are just so cool. And, and I can see, you know, you, you, you derive a huge amount of pleasure from, from seeing moves like that. It's a, yeah. it's a mm -hmm. professional thing. So, well, good. Well, we, we may have to slip in uh, another one of your games into this series as we go along as well. I hope so. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this game. Michael, as always, thanks so much. And uh, really looking forward to, uh, to seeing the next one. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And we will see you next time. Very good.